Hello and welcome. Well, we all know it's far too easy to put on a kilo or two during the cold winter months and at this time of year that comfort food is at its best. Now, coupled with this, not everyone is a fan of the cold and the thought of heading outdoors for a brisk walk or um, a run is usually replaced with sitting on the couch with a hot cup of tea or coffee. But winter 2020 has these challenges and then some. So depending what state and or territory that you're in. We have isolation, working from home, social distancing. These are just some of the many measures that we're taking to ensure our safety. Uh, I mean, however, they are, of course, um, meaning that we are moving less and some of us are gaining some unwanted corona kilos. So jokes aside, um, this is starting to raise some health concerns with some industry experts. So the question is, how can we stay fit and healthy in ISO 2.0? Well, today we welcome our special guest, Ben Lucas, to talk to us all about this. Now, Ben is the director of Flow Athletic, father of two and celebrity trainer to Erin Holland, Sammy, Sammy Robinson and Talitha Cummins. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Pleasure. I'm as good as I possibly could be right now. <laughs> Now, um, winter months can be challenging to stick to an exercise regime, and you would know all too well about this with cooler months uh, and shorter daylight hours. And throughout your career, Ben, you've probably heard every excuse under the sun. So initially, I'd love to know, what are some of the more creative excuses that you've heard throughout your career, simply why someone just couldn't turn up to a training session in winter? <laughs> Um, probably one of the better ones that they couldn't find matching socks. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's, yeah, might probably the, the most creative. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my partner actually never wears matching socks. It drives me absolutely bananas. So he wouldn't have that excuse whatsoever. He wears. Yeah, he <laughs> Unmatching socks every day. Um, of course, you know, throughout what we're going through at the moment, family priorities have changed throughout throughout COVID and um, I guess with health and well-being and safety, um, of course, being the most paramount things that families, um, are, you know, thinking and, and wanting in their lives. Many would think that, you know, staying fit and active would be on a lower list of priorities at the moment for families. However, it's just as important as ever. Um, so I'd lo just love to know your thoughts on that initially. Yeah, look, I, I agree. I think like, a lot of people feel in this way, they're under stress, you know, in society, work is hard and changed, schooling's hard, it's changed, even leaving the house is hard, it's changed, so they think, you know, I don't want another thing to worry about as well, eating well, exercise, so I will just won't do it. However, that's kind of only a, a, a negative kind of cycle because you actually feel worse for not eating or exercising, aesthetics aside, yeah. and then it makes it harder to deal with the stressful situations. So outside of, you know, putting on weight, muscle mass, body fat, etc., just doing the exercise and the nutrition for your mental health during this one of the most, if not the most challenging time in our lifetimes is important just for your your, your sanity and your ability to be able to help work, lead your family, be a good parent, be a good partner, et cetera. Absolutely. And for anyone watching and listening, and this is as a disclaimer, you know, this chat today is, isn't a talk about staying trim and lean. It's really about how we can ensure that we are maintaining physical strength, you know, keeping up our uh, energy and supporting our mental health. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd really love to know from your perspective, how would you um, describe the benefits of staying fit and active during winter? I know you've mentioned some of them. Is there anything else in particular? There's mental health, there's the strength, um, Anything else that I've missed at all? Yeah, so if you, you know, exercise regularly, you sleep better, you know. When you, uh, you sleep better, your brain functions better, you've got more energy. So again, yeah, aesthetics aside, you just feel better and you're able to work, parent, homeschool, whatever it is at the moment, better 
with that regular exercise. Yeah, and these for these reasons, you know, this is why sh- uh, parents really should be making it a priority to fit in time for their health and well-being during isolation. Now, of course, in Victoria and throughout New South Wales, many of us are heading into and or already in our second round of isolation and many are finding it um, a little bit more difficult to keep up their motivation levels Uh, and people are facing all types of financial pressures, stresses, job losses, all that sort of stuff. Now exercising in times of stress is hugely beneficial for our mind and our body. So I'd love to know from your perspective, you know, can you tell us why and how this can actually help benefit our mental health? Yeah, yes, sure. So, so just from the the regular exercise itself, what it does to your to your brain, what it does to your stress hormones, what it does to your feel good hormones is is you know almost the best thing you can do for your mental health. It's proven is 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 regular exercise, you know. So, and people, you know, they may not be able to visit their gyms at the moment. They may be, you know, scared to visit their gyms if they can, which is fair enough too. You don't have to go and run a marathon. It could be just, you know, doing, you know, 50 push-ups a day. It could be doing some squats. It could be doing, you know, step-ups. It could be doing aerobics on TV, whatever. Just block out 30 minutes a day that nothing else can happen in that time that you're going to do some <clears throat> form of exercise and your brain and body will feel so much better for it. Yeah. So what advice do you have for a parent? Let's say that maybe considering home workouts um, the first time round. So now that we're in ISO 2.0, maybe they didn't do it in the first round of isolation, but now this time around, they're like, damn, I've really got to get into this stuff now. (laughs) So what advice do you have? And what inspiration would you say to someone that's considering home workouts for the first time? (laughs) Sure. Uh, yeah, so the, the first bit of advice is block it out in your diary and keep that appointment with yourself. You know, so that, that's the most important thing that when you've locked in that appointment, that no matter what happens, you exercise when if you've booked in at 7.30 or 7.30 come hella high water, I'm doing that session. That means I've got to put a, a baby over my shoulder while I do step ups in the backyard. <laughs> well, then Whatever do. works. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you don't need fancy equipment just your body weight uh, is fine push-ups squats sit-ups lunges dips etc all available online you know on the internet on youtube or whatever there are thousands of at-home body weight free workouts that you could do that are suited to every fitness level and body type yeah now We will speak about some of this stuff more in a moment, but before we do, uh, we published your article titled, A Celebrity Trainer Shares His Top Five Ways to Keep Fit Whilst whilst in Isolation. Now, for someone who hasn't yet read the article, can you please tell us what it's about and tell us, Ben, what inspired you to write it? Uh, Look, I myself am a parent. I've got two young children, as you said. You know, I have been in isolation as well. I've got a beautiful wife. So, you know, I'm just like anyone else. I feel the struggles and challenges to exercise and eat well. But I know when I do those things, I feel better for it. I've got 30 staff at work for me. I've got a community of a thousand people that look for me for advice and leadership. So this is some of the advice I share to them to help them get through this challenging time. Awesome. And we'll have the link through to that article, which has got some great stuff. And we're going to speak about some more content in the article in just a moment. But one of the first things I noticed when I was reading the article, you mentioned about hybrid workouts. So can you maybe just explain what are a few examples of hybrid workouts and what are they? So, so hybrid workouts are doing, you know, a number of different things in the one workout. So you might do some strength training, uh, say if you, you are outside in a park, you might do push-ups, sit up squats, and then go for a jog, you know, or you might do boxing, you know, inside with a partner that's holding pads for you, and then you do some yoga afterwards to stretch down. So it's just two different modalities of training 
in the one workout. So you get different positive effects for your body and it's great for your brain as well, keeping it fresh with the variety as well. So this is two different types of workouts within your workout time frame. Is that right? In the one session, yeah. All right, cool. So what's the benefits of doing this? I mean, I would think you'd save on time and can burn more fat, would you say as well? Yeah, yeah. And, and you get the, the benefits. You could get the strength and cardio workout. So you get the cardio and flexibility workout. So you just get a number of different benefits uh, sandwiched in the one time, especially, you know, we are all time poor at the moment just because we've got so many conflicting priorities. So you're Absolutely. getting the most bang for your buck in the shortest amount of time. Yeah. And, um, with that, with home workouts, if somebody um, isn't able to purchase any workout equipment, um, I guess we can be creative with this sort of stuff. Now, I hear that Bunnings is a great place to buy items you can use in your workout. That being stuff, even like sandbags that can replace weights um, yeah. and even things we have around the home, in the garage, tins of paint. And I've even heard there's even a guy that has workouts about filling a suitcase for heavier weights. I'd love to know just initially, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I actually did a uh, workout with Brooke Boney on the Today Show uh, whilst we're in lockdown, just using household items. Great. So I filled up, you know, son's backpack with books, you know, and you can hold that for step ups or squats, you know, using uh, a bottle of Omo for rows or bicep curls, using. Uh, tin cans out of the cupboard for bicep curls, using a chair for squats or dips. So there's there's so many household items that you can use. Using a washing basket for deadlifts, you know, they're, the house is, is full of, of weight. You don't need uh, a, a fancy set of weights. You just need something that has weight to it and use that for your exercise. So again, the, uh, the internet, especially now more than ever, is absolutely bursting with with content that wants to help you exercise at home. Yeah. So you're telling me there's no excuse, right? There's no excuses now. <laughs> no, there, there isn't. And it's, it's just about the inertia of the situation. You know? Yeah. If you get into a good habit that you go, right, I'm doing 30 minutes a day and you just lock it in and you keep on doing it. You don't want to miss that workout. But if you get stuck in a bit of a rut where you're not doing it, it's much harder to get it going. So maybe you need a friend, an accountability buddy to kind of, you both do it at the same Great time. Great idea. Yeah. You can yeah, yeah, FaceTime yeah. each other and do it on the same time or Zoom or, 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 or whatever it is. Cool. Uh, you know. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to know what are your, let's just say three best exercises for a person who would like to train low impact just to keep themselves healthy and moving. Do you sure. have any? The ideas here. Uh, so, so, so if you're uh, at home without any weights, you know, just just the three basic ones. I would do a, a squat, a lunge, and a push up. You know, those three things. So your your legs are the biggest muscles in your body. So using those muscles is going to burn the most energy. Uh, push-ups going to use your chest, shoulders, triceps, but it's almost like a plank, a moving plank as well. So you're going to use a lot of abdominal muscles too. So mm. those three movements uh, are simple to do. Uh, pretty much everyone can do them uh, and they're going to get your metabolism firing as well. And I hear low impact is when two feet stay on the ground. Is that right? Uh, no, it, it doesn't have to be to be so you can do a one legged squat that's low impact. It's, it's just that it's not high intensity. It's just low intensity. Okay. So moving on to high intensity, what ex exercises can you suggest for someone who's looking for maybe a higher intensity interval training session at home? Yeah. Uh, at home, you, you can do like a, a, a shadow boxing workout at home. You can get a, a skipping rope out. Uh, Great idea. Yeah. You know, but like, you forget, like you remember, you know, when you're a kid, you'd be able to skip for hours, but you know, minutes is, is a challenging workout with a skipping rope. So if your body <laughs> feels, feels up for it, uh, skipping is an absolutely phenomenal workout. Yeah. And we hear a lot about body weight exercises and you mentioned it earlier on. So can you just tell us what body weight exercises are? Sure. So, so that is just 
uh, exercises, not using equipment and just using your own body as the piece of equipment. You know, okay. so squat, push-ups, burpees, lunges, dips, all of those things, just using your own body weight as the resistance. Cool. So then if we're doing workouts at home, how long should home workouts really sort of go for? Um, yeah. And, and how many times per week also should people really be exercising just to stay fit and healthy? Sure. Look, if you can go for three 30 minutes workouts a week, that's going to keep things, things mentally and physically tracking along. Yeah. And um, stretching, obviously, before and after exercising is important. Why do you think it is really important for our body? So I, I would focus on just uh, probably a three-minute warm-up before. So that's just like you were saying, the lower intensity, getting the heart rate up, and then say a five-minute stretch at the end, just help you recover and help you get ready for the next time you work out. Cool. So, yeah. And, you know, there's a saying, um, which I've heard and said a few times, but you can't out-train a bad diet. So in your article, you, sh you share some really great sort of diet tips. So for the moment, could you maybe just maybe just go through those five diet tips um, to, to share with anyone watching or listening? Sure. So just now, first one is just making sure you eat a lot of greens or a lot of veg mm -hmm. with your meals. So why greens in particular? So they're, they're, they're the, the lower carbohydrates. They're very filling, but they've got less energy in them. They've got lots of micronutrients, vitamins, fiber, that's gonna keep you full for longer as well, but have you consuming less of the bad stuff as well. So eating more greens uh, is the first one. The second one is eating enough protein as well. So protein is the building block of life. Protein is the building block of your body. So you can't build muscle mass or increase your metabolism without eating protein. So what is protein? Uh, chicken, beef, fish, uh, tofu. Uh, you can find it in dairy, eggs, things like that. So making sure you're eating enough protein. And again, protein's filling uh, as well too. Um, so try to, some people, they think that when they need to eat well, they need to cut out all carbohydrates. And that's not necessarily so. You need to eat carbohydrates for energy. It's about where are you getting these carbs from? So try to eat less refined carbohydrates. So what does refined carbohydrate means? It's coming out of a packet. So you like um, breads, uh, pastas, uh, you know, all those sugary type carbohydrates we want to reduce, but we want to get them from fruit, sweet potato, brown rice, things like that provide good wholesome energy sources. Another one, just don't eat too much oil in your diet as well. A lot of people add oil to think that's good. Some good fats, but even too much good fat uh, is bad. And at the moment, people are snacking all day. So just try to be aware and not over snack because you're going to really uh, eat more food than you need if you're, you're picking all day. I've heard many people say it's almost like everyone's eating breakup food because we're sort of break, <laughs> having broken up with the way that life was before or what yeah. we had planned. And we're sort of, you know, now having to live a different life to maybe what people are wanting to choose. And, you know, so <laughs> it is sort of that high, <laughs> that the food that's high in uh, salts and sugars and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. And, and, and I completely understand, but you actually feel worse for it and when you feel worse for it you feel less exercised like exercising when you don't exercise you feel like eating bad food and then kind of around and around it goes you know yeah so, and, uh, draw a line in the sand and yeah start eating more and, and exercise regularly and all the immune boosting foods which is our fruit and veg and all that good stuff and eat the rainbow because we obviously need exactly. to be as healthy as possible um, with everything that's going around with COVID. Um, now, also, you're a busy dad. So do you have any tips for staying on track when, you know, when you have just young kids? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I, I tried to incorporate uh, my kids in the exercise as well. Cool. You know, so 
that's uh, so m- my son Oliver's four next week. Oh, so gorgeous. Uh, him and I try to do 30 minutes of exercise a day. So there's a, a 3K loop near my house that he will ride and I will jog with him. You know, so if we do that every day, at least we get, you know, he's getting his exercise in every day and I'm getting my exercise as well. And it's a good bonding time for us as well. So I think that's very important. I want to keep him uh, active uh, and, and really to enjoy being being uh, exercise. I also want to get my exercise in as well, but also not at the expense of spending time with him. So, Love yeah. it. Great idea. And I mean, that being said, what else can parents do in order to prioritize their health and well-being? Sleep would be one, I would think. <laughs> um, but yeah. is there anything else that you can maybe suggest? Look, you know, probably the, the, the biggest change I've made to positive change to my life in 2020 is just getting to bed half an hour earlier, you know, and, and all that's mean is just watching a half hour less television. And, you know, I'm up at 4.40 uh, every day. Ouch. I, with matching socks. My, with matching socks. My kids <laughs> uh, by, by 7 p.m., you know, and then sometimes the... Uh, you know, the, the habit is to go down and just mindlessly watch TV for a couple hours just to kind of zone out after a big day. But, you know, being disciplined to go, right, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'm in bed, you know, read for half an hour and fall asleep. Well, that, that, that's probably been the biggest change, positive change I've made to my health is just getting to bed that half hour early. So that's a discipline like anything else. Oh, I love that word discipline. Yes. Yes. Is, is getting to bed when you said yourself you're going to get in bed because I have, again, many clients that their results suffer because they're not getting enough sleep. Um, they're not getting enough sleep because they're not disciplined. Not like speaking one the other day, I just stayed up watching movies all night and I got three hours sleep, you know, so her training's bad, her work was bad, her food was bad because of that, you know, but you don't need to watch those movies. Your life's much better for not doing that, you know? So just using the discipline of getting to bed on time and your life really has a number of positive knock-on effects for that. That's great advice. Thank you for sharing that, Ben. Um, You mentioned also about scheduling and making time for your workouts um, and to plan your exercise. Um, A lot of people do this sometimes in a week in advance too. So with with parents that, you know, um, both maybe say working from home, scheduling is something that, you know, um, putting things into the diary, into the calendar. If both parents um, sort of share the load and locking the time for their weekly schedule, would you suggest this is something else that could potentially work as well? Yeah, yeah, look, like my wife and I are, are fortunate that I, uh, I I own a business and I don't live, I work too far from home so that I can go home and mind our young daughter while she goes for a workout, mm. you know, but it is good that we can work together. I think husband and wife need to plan together because exercise is important for you to be a better parent, like it just is. Yes. You know, so how can you work together that you both can get your exercise in and you still get to plan, have time with your families, but you share that load together. So that's something very important, yes. Yeah, and you mentioned about planning, like planning meals in advance can sometimes help as well. Um, for example, even just listing the meals on the weekends that you're going to maybe sort of, um, you know, eat in the, the weeks sort of um, sort of coming up. So, and this way you can t- take note, I guess, of what you're spending um, and all that sort of stuff as well. So, um, I mean, is there anything else you could maybe suggest with planning meals and how that can sort of work in with just keeping sort of fit and active and, and healthy at all? Well, you know, again, we're talking about discipline before. The other big word for me is preparation. So if you don't know what you're going to eat the, you know, the day ahead, well, you're unlikely to eat well. You know, so I want my clients to know exactly what's going on in their day the next day. So when they get breaks, when they're going to be able to eat and what they're going to be able to eat 
at those times as well, preferably that they've either prepped that, they've bought that, or they know what healthily they're going to buy at that time. Because yeah, again, if you don't prepare for success, where well, you're going to get ready for failure and you're going to eat something poor and you're going to feel worse for it. Yeah. Now we we'll mentioned at the start that you um, are a celebrity trainer. You know, what are some of the biggest issues that you're seeing from your clients in terms of their ISO and post ISO training? Uh, what is some of their biggest? Oh, look, it, it like it's a bit of depression. It's stress. It it's lack of motivation. Yeah, you know, I, I think people right now they don't know how long this is going to go for and they're kind of like well what's the point <laughs> you know so so it's my my job to keep them keep them focused motivated inspired to to know that your health is important because you're important to so many people yes you know so and just when you exercise regularly you just feel better about yourself and about life as well so just helping them just just to break the ice just to get back into a regular routine and, and that helps them feel better and and again you know we only used to do face-to-face one-on-one personal training now i do uh, personal training through facetime over zoom you know through facebook messenger you know so there, there's so many technological ways you can access people support yeah. friends now to, to help you along your journey you know and, and i mean do you have any other tips i guess to help parents feel their best at the moment um you've just mentioned about a regular routine would that be one of the the key elements is just to setting a schedule and having that routine and, and having that discipline that you've spoken about uh yeah i i, I think like a regular if you can going to bed and waking time as well that's kind of because some people's work schedules are thrown off at the moment they're like i don't know what time to go to bed i don't know what time to get up i don't know which way i'm going left right up and down so (laughs) just to, to put yourself in a routine even if your routine's gone out the window I go to bed at this time, I get up at this time, I exercise at this time, you know, I work here, I play with the kids then. But even though if you're on your own schedule, create a schedule, create a timetable that's going to help benefit your life holistically. Yes, and just to prioritise health and, and fitness and, and wellness overall. And that's going to sort of combat some of those things that you've just mentioned, you've seen in your clients, um, which everyone is experiencing subconsciously or consciously at some point um, and have a sort of experience. So um, definitely everything you've shared with us has been really, really useful and critical for us to also to take on board. So if you were to summarise your key messages from what we've spoken about today, what, what, what would they be? Uh, it would be to uh, prioritise your exercise. By doing so, just book in appointments in your diary for yourself, with yourself, that you're going to keep to the exercise. Uh, two would be uh, schedule some exercise time in with your children. You know, let them ride a new run or, you know, do some, some exercises, squats, push-ups, sit-ups, with them you know which is a a fun activity uh with your nutrition it's try to eat less processed food uh try to eat more fruit and veg like and try to eat more lean protein nutrition isn't rocket science it's just consistency yeah you know uh try to get regular sleep as well try to get enough sleep that'll be an absolute game changer with your health and wellness to just go on to bed half an hour early every night an extra four hours of sleep that's half an hour of sleep a week it will actually make a big difference yeah great advice now if our parents have got any questions for you and or want to find out more about flow athletic whereabouts can they find you can you just tell us a little bit about your business too and and you mentioned um, offline before that you guys are moving to an online program. Is it in September, did you say? Yeah, September 1, our online program uh, launches. So we've got a physical studio. We've got a 1,000 square metres in Paddington. So we've got a, 
a yoga studio, a Pilates studio, a spin studio, a strength studio, and we've got a personal training studio as well. So we do 160 group exercise classes a week, plus we do personal training. Uh, so we've been here for eight years, uh, oh. Telstra of the year. Yeah, we've got a good, good little business, great community, 30 staff, uh, but we're moving to the online space as well, just because people want that as well as the physical membership. And part two is we don't know how long life will be in and out of this way. So we want to be able to uh, assist the most people we can. Yes, fantastic. So when that comes around, we would be more than happy to share that out to our audience as well. So families all around Australia can access your program and that sort of stuff. But Ben, I've really enjoyed this chat today. It's been awesome. Take care and um, hopefully we can have a chat again in the not too distant future. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.